Section 6.5, Mathematical Modeling Using Least Squares. There's many different ways to plot uh, curves that fit data sets. We can do um, maybe a linear curve in some cases. We could do quadratic curves in other cases, etc. Different polynomial curves, all sorts of different uh, regressions that we could do to uh, plot curves that fit data points. But we'll start with the uh, linear um, regression. So that's going to be our line that best fits our data. And it turns out that there is a unique regression line. We're going to start with this theorem that says that uh, there is a unique least square solution if we let x1 through uh, x1, y1 through x and y in be a set of two or more data points that are not all lying on a vertical line. And we let m be this matrix composed of one in the first column and the x's in the second column. And then let y just be all of the y values in that column. So then we have a unique least square straight fit line given by y equals a star plus b star x to the data points. And moreover, we have an equation for v star, which is a star b star, which is given by the formula m transpose m inverse, m transpose y. So this shouldn't be super surprising given the previous section, but we'll still do a couple examples of it anyway, just to make sure that everything's clear. Just remember that we're solving for v star where v star is essentially a unique sol solution to this equation. So we're gonna be finding the best approximation we can for mv equals y. Remember v is the coefficients for the line of uh, best fit, our regression line. We won't have an exact line to fit the data points, but we can approximate that. That's how we get the best fit line, which we get by solving this equation for a vector v star. So let's do it. Let's find the least squares straight line fit to the four points that are given in example one. You can see them plotted in the figure and you can see there is a line drawn. Let's see if we can get the equation of that line. So first we'll write out our matrix M. So that's equal to ones in all the first column, four points, so four ones, and then the X values, zero, one, two, three. Now we'll write out M transpose M. So if you take M transpose it multiplied by M, you should get four, six, six, 14. And then we'll get the inverse of that. It's not hard to get inverses for two by two matrices. So that'll just be one over the determinant, one tenth times seven, two, minus three, minus three. Notice the determinant wasn't 10, I just uh, factored out a two. So I could get uh, threes instead of sixes, etc. Okay, so that's MTM inverse. Now let's look at V star. Instead of having to solve all the stuff that we did last time, we have the shortcut where we could just do M transpose M inverse. Basically did this at the end of the last section. Times M transpose times Y. That's our formula for V star. And that'll be one tenth, seven minus three, minus three, two times m transpose. Okay, so that's one, 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 zero, one, two, th three. And then we have to multiply by y, which was one, three, four, four. So all of our uh, y values. Okay, so then Multiplying all of that out, we should get 1.51 for V star. So that means that the A value 
is 1.5. So y equals 1.5 plus 1 times x, b times x. So that's just x, which kind of makes sense. If you look at this uh, line over here, it looks like it's going up 1 over 1. And it looks like the y-intercept right over there is at 1.5. So it's kind of cool that we actually found this line of best fit. How about we do another example? So Hooke's law in physics states that length x of a uniform spring is a linear function of the force y applied to it. If we express this relationship as y equals a plus bx, then the coefficient b is called the spring constant. Suppose a particular unstretched spring has a measured length of 6.1 inches. That is, x equals 6.1 when y equals 0. Suppose further that, as illustrated in the figure, various weights are attached to the end of the spring and the following table of resulting spring lengths is recorded. Find the least square straight line fit to the data and use it to approximate the spring constant. Okay, so let's write out our points. We have 6.1, 0, 7.6, 2, 8.7, 4, 10.4 comma 6. So that's our four points. Let's make our matrix M. So four points, four ones. Then all of our X's, 6.1, 7.6, 8.7, 10.4, .7, and Y. So that's 0, 2, 4, 6. Okay, let's get V star now. So V star is equal to A star B star. And that's M transpose M inverse times M transpose times Y. And you could take these matrices, plug them into a calculator. That's basically what I did. I'm skipping that part, and I got minus 8.6, 1.4. Okay, so that means that we have B star is approximately 1.4 pounds per inch. That's the slope of our uh, least square straight fit, uh, line to fit the data. And that means that we can use it to approximate the spring constant because that's the coefficient b. The line would just be y equals negative 8.6 plus 1.4x. According to Newton's second law of motion, a body near the Earth's surface falls vertically downward in accordance with the equation s equals s0 plus v0t plus half gt squared, where s is equal to the vertical displacement downward relative to some reference point, s0 is equal to the displacement from the reference point at time t equals 0, v0 is the velocity at time t equals 0, g is the acceleration of gravity at the Earth's surface. Suppose that a laboratory experiment is performed to approximate g by measuring the displacement s relative to a fixed reference point of a falling weight at various times. Let's use the experimental results shown in the following table to approximate g. Alrighty, so let's uh, get a little bit organized first. So we have a0 is equal to s0, a1 is equal to v0, and a2 is equal to half g, where s is equal to a0 plus a1t plus a2t squared. So all I did was organize my coefficients for a general quadratic equation. We're basically now having to work with a second degree polynomial instead of a first degree, just a slightly more complicated example, but the method generalizes pretty easily. So not a line of best fit anymore, it's gonna be uh, 
parabola of best fit. All right, so we we'll need to solve for these these coefficients a zero, a one, and a two. So we have a bunch of points. Let's look at those. We have point one, comma negative point one eight. We have point two, comma point three one. We have point three, one point oh three. We have point four. 2.48 and we have 0.5 3.73 so now we can build a matrix M it'll be very similar to before we'll just have a bunch of ones we have five points so we need five ones so one two three four five then we've got a whole bunch of different um, coefficients for T Right, because this is basically for our uh, constant. So now our second column is going to be all the coefficients for t instead of just having the x's. So that means we need uh, t1, t2, t3, t4, t5. Those are our our x values are going to go over there for the coefficients for t. But then we need another column for the coefficients for t squared. So what we'll do is we'll square the um, x values that we're going to plug in for the second column. So we'll do t1 squared, t2 squared, t3 squared, t4 squared, t5 squared. And that's how we'll build our matrix M. So filling in, we have 1, 1, 1, 1. And then all the t's, I'm just going to pull the x values. So we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So, so far very similar to the previous example, except that my last column, I'm gonna square the previous column. So I'll get 0 0.01, 0 0.04, 0 0.09, 0 0.16, and 0.25. And that'll be M. For Y, I'll just build it out of the Y values again. So that's just, uh, S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. And that'll be equal to minus 0 0.18, 0 0.31, 1.03, 2.48, 3.73, 3.75. Okay, beautiful. So now we can calculate V star. That'll be A0 star, A1 star, and A2 star. And it'll be equal to, again, MT, M transpose, M inverse, times m transpose times y, same formula for v. So in this case, if you take the matrices, you plug them into a calculator, you do the uh, multiplication, you should get minus 0 0.40, 0 0.35, 16 16.1. So that means that we have s equal to minus 0 0.40 plus 0.35t plus 16.1t squared. So that means that half g has to equal 16.1, because that's the coefficient for t squared. Okay, so then solving for g, just multiply by 2, we get that g is equal to 32.2 feet per second squared. So we have that S0 is a 0 star, that's minus 0 0.40 feet. That's just you plug in zero for time t. 
and we have v0 is a one star our initial uh, velocity would be 0.35 feet per second that would be if you just look at the coefficient right over there 0.35 